heart of a baboon, eye of a newt, and the skin of a pig. It's not just a recipe for witchcraft anymore. Some might be part of the future of organ transplantation. Hey everyone, welcome to D News. I'm Trace. For more than two years, a baboon at a research institute in Maryland survived with the heart of a pig in its abdomen. Two years! The previous record for implanting an organ from another species was about 500 days, but this heart made it to 945 days. Cross-species transplantation is called xenotransplantation. It might seem like a Frankensteinian fiction, but it's been done. A baboon heart was transplanted into a newborn baby with a heart problem. She lived almost three weeks. Burn patients sometimes accept skin grafts from pigs, and Parkinson's patients have received neurons from our porky pals as well. It would seem like we have an unending supply of organs from animals grown for food, but cross-species transplants, though hypothesized for centuries, are now just becoming a reality if scientists can get it to work properly. Firstly, we need to pick a species. The natural inclination may be to use genetically related primates, you know, like chimpanzees, but chimps are endangered. Baboons, on the other hand, are genetically similar to chimps and humans and relatively plentiful, but they're terrible transplant donors. Their organs are too small and matching our blood types is incredibly rare. In fact, throughout history, doctors have been pretty slapdash at picking animals for this, trying sheep, rabbits, dogs, cats, rats, chickens, even pigeons. It turns out pigs might be one of the best, though. Despite having little genetic commonality, pigs' bodies and organs are almost identical in form and function to a human's. The heart, specifically, is roughly the same size and shape. Because of this, we already use pig valves in some heart repair. Additionally, pigs are plentiful, and society has no real qualms about killing them, even if some people do. Okay, so we've got our pig. Now what? Well, any time a foreign object enters your body, your immune system mounts a defense to wipe out the intruder. If someone just jams a new heart in you, your body will assume that it is a giant virus or some other invader and begin attacking it with a fervor. There are two ways to stop this. One, immunosuppressant drugs literally shut down the immune system. Obviously not ideal. Or you can trick the immune system into thinking that the new organ was part of the body the whole time. Simply put, tissues have proteins on their surface called human leukocyte antigens. They're like license plates telling your immune system which tissues are local. If researchers can take the plates off the new organ or match them to the existing ones, the immune system is just going to leave it alone. In this case, doctors implanted the pig heart into the baboon's abdomen and used drugs to suppress its immune system. But there's another concern. Pigs, unlike humans, have another antigen called galactose oligosaccharide, or just GAL. In the 90s, researchers realized because humans don't make GAL, our immune system goes crazy when it sees it. It's like seeing a license plate from Nazi Germany in Cleveland. When it happens, everybody notices. The organ can be rejected in minutes. In 2007, cloning technology finally resulted in a GAL knockout pig, basically a pig without the gene to make the GAL antigen. This pig heart was one of those genetically modified GAL knockouts, so it lasted a lot longer. No antigen backlash, 945 days of hearty fun. It might have gone longer, but the heart began to degrade as the immunosuppressants were relieved. Which is really exciting, actually, because if the pig heart can survive and pump blood in a close human relative, even for a short time, it might open the doors for pig parts to become bridge organs for those waiting for human ones. 22 patients die every day waiting for donor organs. Broadening the field of potential donors could save thousands of people. Obviously, the ability to keep the body from rejecting any foreign organ is amazing, but to use one from another species, that's just insanely medievally cool. Plenty more research needs to be done, but still, can you imagine walking around with a pig heart? I wonder if I'd be more delicious. Look, if you're into weird transplants, you should definitely check out Julian's video about how doctors are transplanting penises. Julian totally went there. When it comes time for the operation, they'll have to connect two to six nerves, six or seven arteries, and the urethra, the tube that runs inside the penis. If all goes well, they expect the grafted member to be more than just for show. Or if you want to know more about how we swap out antigen license plates to help organs work in new people, Amy's got that for you right here. A kidney transplant, like any organ transplant, works best if there's a match between the donor and the recipient. That's because our bodies are pretty good at rejecting foreign objects. Okay, so let's say you needed an organ. Would you take a pig heart? Do you have qualms? Tell me about it in the comments. Make sure you subscribe for more D News, and I'll see you next time.